the first thing I did was actually made all the tile sets in 3x3 three three inch squares and then I wanted to make steps to match them so I made those same 3x3 three three inch squares cut them into three pieces and then shorten them to make them look like steps. This is the easiest way I have found to make good looking steps. Next it was time to put the grid in the steps and this was a bit more tricky than it was with just the tiles but it ended up working out just fine. Uh, basically just set my fence on my hot wire cutter to one inch and then slow, put it on a low setting and then just kind of slid it across and rotated and created a bunch of nice little lines. Worked out nicely. I made sure I got all of the sides too, not just the tops. It was then time to texture the steps. Uh, I did the same texturing on the tile sets as well and pretty much everything. I wanted them to look really consistent. But I did each individual layer, which you probably don't have to do in retrospect. You could probably glue them all up and then just roll tin foil on all the pieces that are exposed. Uh, but this ended up making a really nice consistency on the edges as well. It didn't just look like there was like a really clean line and then only certain parts of them had a nice texture. So the next step was to do another uh, phase of texturing. And I like to do this with some tweezers. I just kind of grab little chunks of foam and pull them out. These tiles were going to look really worn and tattered. They're going to be ruins after all, so I wanted to make sure that I had a really rough, rugged look. And you just kind of pick randomly. I like to hit the corners a lot on these on the squares because I feel like those parts would probably be most susceptible to breaking uh, in real life. But uh, yeah, just went through and went to town on these. It does create quite a bit of a mess. Having a small vacuum nearby or any kind of vacuum nearby is always a good idea. Then on to the last step of texturing that I do, and that is taking a sharp object like this clay sculpting tool. The pokey end is really great for drawing cracks and lines in foam. So this creates a lot more character to each piece that you work on. So I highly recommend taking that extra step and doing some hand drawn lines. Honestly, it pays off, especially once you get your final wash uh, finished. Looks awesome. The base of the columns is just going to be a bunch of square blocks kind of stacked on each other. I drew lines on them to know where I wanted to cut them to look like they were built brick by brick. You'll see more of this later, but just a kind of a quick call out to it here. I decided I wanted to make round pillars and kind of more inspired by, I guess, kind of like more Roman style pillars. Not that my world that I'm running right now in my campaign is Roman at all but I just like the look of them. So I made my own kind of round cutting template for my hot wire cutter, which worked out really well. Uh, I learned a few weeks back, or I guess it was a while ago, but too long after I got my hot wire cutter that my hot wire cutter is a little bit crooked. Uh, you can kind of tell when you're watching this, when I line it up, it is kind of slanted toward the backside um, to the right of my hand right there, but it works out enough and I've been able to kind of work around it but this little tool that I made just out of chipboard and a nail uh, which I ended up shortening worked really well to cut some round columns that I ended up stacking on each other. After gluing those together with a small layer in between it was time to add some vertical lines kind of like you'd see on like I said kind of Roman type columns and uh, I did this the exact same way I put the lines uh, or the grid lines in the tile pieces and in the steps so uh, just kind of pressed it on there worked really well I was very satisfied with the outcome of this after getting all of the texture added but um, uh, the hot wire tool is I gotta say it's it's a really great tool to work with uh, even though mine's kind of a little interesting you see how I have to tilt my piece every time I want to get a straight line on it just a little bit but uh, yeah I mean great tool highly recommend one they're not crazy expensive either uh, at least I don't think so I want to talk a little bit about building in layers and adding layers to your pieces as you saw in the last clip there was a kind of a small little uh, piece in between two columns that I'd glued together and right here I actually cut another piece it's a little bit uh, wider than my columns to sit at the base of them on top of the square base that is there so you'll see coming up what that looks like but 
Building in layers really kind of brings a lot of depth for one and a bit more character and originality to your piece. Even though you may take inspiration from like real life architecture, uh, taking layers and adding them here and there will kind of open up your creativity a little bit and you'll be able to come up with new original ideas, which uh, is always a good thing. Texturing these pillars was really the only part of the project where I didn't roll it with tin foil first. I wanted to make sure that those kind of grooves uh, would show up and not get kind of munched with the tin foil. So I picked them apart just like I would with uh, tweezers. I drew lines on them with a pokey thing. And then I took this tool here and rolled across it to give it a little bit more of like a carved stone look. And then I even dragged it across it to get a little bit more fine lines and just a little bit more depth and texture. Uh, overall, I was really happy with how these turned out. Um, honestly, I think they look great. They're not perfectly round because of my hot wire cutter, but um, they weren't intended to be because honestly, they're ruins and they're supposed to look wrecked and broken and not perfect. I'm telling you, a vacuum is a must. Uh, foam gets everywhere and uh, yeah, mine was getting a little full, but uh, yeah definitely have a vacuum nearby it makes all the difference and then once everything was built it was just time to glue them together I just used hot glue here you could have added like a little skewer here if you wanted to uh, to give it a little bit more sturdiness but honestly this was gonna be enough and uh, turns out it has been because after painting these and messing around with them they're very very strong and that's what each pillar kind of looks like I did alternate the size of the bottom pillar half compared to the top pillar half and made some even shorter ones to give a lot of variety but uh, yeah really pleased with how these look they uh, are a lot of fun to play with so yeah really happy the next thing was to make some more crumbled looking ones so I got a few leftover cuts and a few leftover uh, kind of columns that I had and just kind of made them look like they had fallen over and broken kind of like this and I wish I made more of these, to be honest with you. Well, it would have made a big difference. I only have three of them. But again, just making it out of leftover material. Uh, and But really happy with the ultimate turnout. So yeah, get creative with that leftover material. You never know what you might be able to make. I also wanted to create some kind of, well, an archway. And then some kind of like crumble looking other types of pillars or maybe like wall pieces that have come into disarray as well so uh, I just kind of went for it and I textured these the same way that I had done the other brick pieces and the tile pieces and uh, yeah I'm glad I did this because it kind of creates a kind of focal point or a feature within setting this up in any kind of way that you choose to but it was a really good idea I'm glad I went with it and it was a surprise because I didn't know I was going to do it to begin with. And but I just kind of felt like I needed a little bit more, you know. While I was tweezing out some texture, I decided to just really break this thing in half. And uh, I thought it would be a lot better to have two separate pieces, make it look like a crumbling arch. Or maybe I could just use one half in a build. Yeah, you know, it was just a kind of a neat idea I had just on the fly while I was building this after it was already all glued together. And so, yeah, I just went for it and I'm really happy that I did. Um, don't be afraid to adapt and make changes kind of mid project. Uh, it might pay off in the long run. And if it doesn't, then, oh, well, you can always just start that piece over from the beginning. No harm done. If you watched my video about or where I made stalagmites and stalactites, You'll know that I kind of posed a question and was kind of curious what would be a good way to weight uh, some objects, especially these really tall ones. I mean, even though they're tall, they're still super lightweight being made of foam. And I had avoided using screws before, but I decided that, you know what, honestly, they work really, really well. So they screw in so smoothly, so easily. They're secure, they're concealed, and they have honestly just the right amount of weight. And so yeah, I put two in each of the bottom of these large uh, arches and I put two in the bottom of all the columns and then um, any of the shorter columns I just put one and they work really well. They kind of give it a little bit of a bottom weight which helps them, I mean they still tip over but they're just, they don't 
not, they're a lot less likely to fall over and you know they're a lot less finicky to work with when putting things together or when like moving your miniatures across the map or the piece of terrain it's it just makes a world of difference so I, I highly recommend finding what works for you one suggestion one suggestion that I did get was uh, using like finished nailers and just putting a bunch of them in there in the bottom and I could see how that would work too it was on to painting after that uh, it took a long time to get here there's a lot of pieces but I first gave them a nice coat uh, of the Mod Podge mixed with black acrylic paint over everything and then I painted with uh, gray it's pewter gray by Apple Barrel it's just a Walmart brand it's nothing fancy but I am really loving this color for all, all of my gray uses it's kind of like just the right color so got everything coated in that color and then it was on to doing some dry brushing with a lighter color and I did that by using parchment by Folk Art. This is my favorite kind of light tan. I use it in every single dry brushing I do. Can't recommend it enough. If you can't find it, uh, the linen by Folk Art is almost the exact same color and works just as well. What I'm doing here is I would consider a heavy dry brush. Um, I have a good amount of paint on my brush, but you know, not a lot. But I think the point is, is that I'm pushing pretty hard and, and getting a really solid coverage over the whole thing. As you can see, it really lightens up the gray because once you put on a wash, if we were just to put a wash over this just now, it would darken up that gray quite a bit. So having this and having a lot of it on there, uh, I think really kind of keeps it looking nice and gray, brings out the texture, etc. So yeah, I do a heavy dry brushing here. Uh, other instances where you want to do a lighter dry brushing are going to be when you just want to kind of hit the highlights just a little bit. Uh, but for this instance, everything was mostly heavy. My goal with this project was to make these look like they were really old, overgrown looking ruins like you'd probably find in like South America, Mexico, things like that. So I wanted to make sure they had a lot of kind of organic color in them. So I used a green and I wanted kind of a medium green. This one's more of a kind of a wasabi green. Actually, I've got it right here on my table. It's ah, wild wasabi. So I put this in there, thought it was a little bit too light. So I ended up adding a little bit of that pewter gray to it to darken it up just a tad. And then I actually dry brushed it on and I didn't do full coverage. I just did it in spots. And if you notice, I did it in spots where I have a lot of kind of deep texture where I removed a lot of foam from the columns and uh, all the other pieces as well. So here's a quick kind of before and after comparison. But the next step was to highlight a little bit more because I knew a lot of that green might get muted down quite a bit. And I wanted a variety of, orga of organic colors. So I went with a very light yellow. Uh, don't know the name of this one something like Sunflower maybe by Folk Art. But uh, yeah, it uh, again, just put it in selective places, hit it over the green, over the gray, and uh, just kind of really create a little more depth of overgrowth. After that was all finished, it was time to do a dark wash over it. And you can kind of see what we were going for here. Um, taking this and putting on that wash just is the most satisfying part of all of this, honestly second to or probably second would be dry brushing but getting this on there having it fall on all those nice cracks all of the time that you spend adding that texture really pays off in the end this is a wash that's kind of a black and brown mixture again wanted to go with a little bit of a mix on this because i wanted it to be to darken it quite a bit but also have a little bit more of a natural warmer color in it because again overgrown and to be honest with you, I use the kind of black and brown mixture in most of my washes. I do occasionally use just black and just, or just brown, uh, but it just kind of depends. And I always like to do a few test pieces, which I actually did in this. And they're not on screen here, but I had a few kind of like miscuts that I like to play with. And uh, I used those and uh, tested the paint on them, the dry brush, and also the wash to make sure that I was going to be happy with what I had. And then it was on the last step, adding moss. Uh, I make this moss out of two types of kind of fine flocking. 
just a kind of a really kind of normal green and a more kind of olive green. Mix it together, the two colors, and then I add in a mixture of 50% water and 50% PVA glue. I just use Elmer's and kind of get a good amount of it in there so it looks like chutney, like I've mentioned in previous videos. It seriously looks like chutney. It's great. So you can apply this in two ways. Uh, you can apply it just with the barbecue skewer, uh, or you can also apply it with a brush. And the brush honestly probably works better, but both work if you're in a pinch. So I put that on all of the pillars. I put on everything, but, I mean, to be honest with you, but I made sure I put it in cracks, undersides where there's kind of overhangs, and then a lot of the uh, kind of more divots and things like that. And this is what the final product looks like. It turns out great. It looks like something lived on it at once, or is living on it currently, I should say. And yeah, I was really pleased with these. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of the new subscribers that I've received. Uh, always love the comments. So please keep that up, share it with your friends. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. But thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy this little montage that I put together at the end. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.